It's a strange thing. It, it must be a lot to do with the writers, I think, that I'm able to just plop straight into character as young Susan again. I don't find it at all difficult. It was just so easy to slip straight back into it. You know, the minute I got into that booth, my voice goes up to, to Jamie's up up here, and his voice goes up, and, and then Patrick's coming down. And, hey, yes, yes, yes. And just, it's just, it's, um, I won't say it's easy, because um, David Richardson will start lowering my fee. It's very hard work, terribly hard work. You have an opportunity to play a developing character, and it's, it's a great feeling. And I, I really like Stephen. I, I, I think he's a smashing character, and I mean, he's great fun to play. It's, 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 it's great. I mean, it's, it's the only way one has of going back in time. I mean, wouldn't it be nice if we could just go back in time 50 years ago? 50 years. But uh, no, it's, it's, it's wonderful for me to be able to do that. Thank you, Big Finish. <laughs> but I love doing Patrick's voice because, you know, I always say to David Richardson, the producer, you know, I don't get two fees. You know, I get um, one fee for playing Jamie, but I do Patrick's voice for, for love because that's because of the guy. You know, we had great fun together. Three of the happiest days of my life work with Patrick Troughton. I love the idea of the early adventures. I think that, that's a great idea, like I enjoyed the, the whole idea of the Companion Chronicles. Um, getting the opportunity to play Bill Hartnell, it's not, you know, not an impersonation of him, uh, it's my impression of him, and I think I get him quite consistent. So people do tend to accept it, and which, is, which is lovely from my point of view. Uh, so, so I love, I love doing that. Well, Domain of the Void was absolutely fantastic because when I played Susan in the Void episodes um, back then, uh, the Void was never really described other than some creature in a rubber suit. But now we understand because of this marvelous, marvelous writing about the Void, so imaginative, that in fact um, the mask, anyway, is an actual transfiguration of the creature, the man that was underneath it. And it cannot be removed under pain of death. It's the most hideous creation, but incredibly clever. I've been asked uh, at this convention today, that, uh, which is my favorite big finish. And uh, to be honest, I, I can't really pick a favorite. They, they, I, I've enjoyed so many of them, but one that I particularly did enjoy was I think the last one that I've had released now, which is um, uh, The War to End All Wars, which was a totally different thing. The nice thing about doing these big finish things is you get an opportunity to explore elements of the character that you never had a chance to explore on television. Um, in The War to End All Wars, I've got to play myself at 70. Well, I'm older than that anyway. So that's what I would sound like. But this is how I sound as Stephen, which is very much as I sounded as Stephen when I played him all those years ago. My voice hasn't changed very much. It's dropped uh, in tone just a little bit, but it's not changed very much. So I had to alter my voice to be me as I currently am, this 75-year-old guy playing Stephen. Um, and I think it works. And I absolutely love the story. I think it's brilliant. The Big Finish allows you to use your imagination in a way that almost nothing else allows you to. The production values are phenomenal. I think they are wonderful. And I believe that Big Finish won the BBC Audio uh, Producer of the Year. Uh, and rightly so. It's wonderful stuff. Um, and it's a, it's a great joy and an honor, actually, to be involved. Can you keep the noise down, please? I'm trying to do an interview here. <laughs> Put a, you know, he's come all the way from London. He's, I've got to do it all over again. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> just say gold. Who, who has gold? <laughs> Sorry, just... <laughs>